You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, General Hospital fans. Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I have got your latest comings and goings update for the ABC Soap Opera. If you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. And now let's dive right in. So... (sighs) This exit is one that nobody saw coming because this character was not on our radar. We have to say goodbye and rest in peace to Olivia Jerome. Actress Tanya Walker tweeted (laughs) when she heard that they had just killed Olivia off after like seven years of absence. She said, looks like I died. Oh, what a rip. I wish we could have actually shot some great story. But again, another missed opportunity, unless it's not. I guess you never know. It wouldn't be the first time. Kind of a weird message, but Olivia was pulled out of a prison transfer van, taken into the woods, and somebody popped two in the back of her head. Execution style, gangland style execution. Somebody's taking out mob bosses, and that's what Olivia was. With Olivia's death, it looks like Ava Jerome is now an only child. Julian and Olivia are dead, her brother and sister. Um, their dad is dead, Victor Jerome. So Ava's mom was in Pawtuck being held there last we heard, but like so many other dropped GH plots, it came to not. I don't even know why they brought up her mother, but as far as I know, it's just Avery and Ava and her mother left in the Jerome family right now. What's really weird is back in 2017, Olivia Jerome was sent to Darkham Asylum for killing Morgan, kidnapping Griffin Monroe and trying to use him in that bizarre Duke Lavery resurrection scheme and a host of other crimes, you know, bombing, just everything. And in 2022, they name dropped her. And that's how we found out she had been transferred over to Pentonville prison. And then she was being transferred again and they just killed her off off screen. So after a seven year absence, dead on arrival, they unzipped the body bag. They all looked at her. She seems to be well and truly dead. But it is a soap opera, so never say never. Also in this comings and goings update, what about Dex Heller? Dex Heller seems to have left town. He is, you know, under the radar now. Sonny told him he had to go, but I seriously doubt that Evan Hofer is off the ABC soap opera. He is on contract, although we did have Sonny ordering Dex to leave town before he makes Jocelyn's life worse and put him at risk, Sonny at risk, Joss at risk, everybody. So supposedly Dex is in a safe house waiting on Brick to get him a new identity so they can funnel him some cash and ship him off. But you know, it is not going to be that easy. So I just wonder if we are going to see Dex soon or will it be a couple of weeks? Wait and see. All right. Eva LaRue debuts on February 26th as Blaze's mother, Natalie Rogers Ramirez. And this is just after Christina and Blaze have a romantic night together. If you remember, Blaze vowed she was going to come out to her mother. But if her mom sees them canoodling before she comes out, it could definitely get messy. So we are excited to meet Ms. Ramirez next week. John Cates, Jagger. He prefers to be called John. Uh, In case you wondered if Recast Jagger was just dropping in just to amp up February sweeps, think again. It was just confirmed that Adam Harrington is on contract at the ABC Soap. So get used to seeing blue-eyed FBI hottie John around Port Charles for quite some time. You know, contracts are a minimum of a year. That's pretty standard. Sometimes two or three years. Three is pretty rare these days. Years more typical, especially for someone new. So that means we've got probably 11 and a half more months of him unless GH starts cleaning house and firing people on contract, which they have done in the past. So I wondered for a hot minute if Jagger might be the one gunning for Sonny and the other mob bosses. But knowing he's on contract, that means he's not disposable as a villain. So now I wonder if he's going to be more of a kind of a new Taggart. Remember when Taggart was just obsessed with busting Sonny back in the day and it was just nonstop. Taggart was, I miss Taggart. I hate that they just sidelined him and he was, gosh, he was so great back in the day. So I feel like that's kind of the 
role that they're going to have John doing for us now because so much law enforcement is friends of Sonny at this point. They need somebody who is not. And speaking of Sonny, another bit of General Hospital comings and goings info has to do with the mob boss, his associate in crime, not a partner in crime, not technically, Lady Mob Boss Selena Wu is back on the scene this week. I mean, I guess they are technically partners in crime. They have partnered up to do some crime, but they are not full-time partners. So late this coming week, Sunny gets together with Miss Selena Wu. It is in both of their best interests to figure out who is gunning for mob bosses because that is what they both are. I had wondered if the shooter could be somebody working for Miss Wu. I mean, at one point, I wondered if Curtis might have been her intended victim, but she meant him to die and they just assumed it was a ricochet. I'm sure we're going to get a better idea where her head is at next week when she chats with Sonny. Also, Adam Huss is supposed to be out as Nicholas Cassidyne. As I predicted, we didn't even get a trial. We just heard third hand that he pled out and was sent to Pentonville. However, I do wonder if we might get an occasional scene of Adam Huss now and then, at least until Spencer's back from the land of the presumed dead in the next few weeks. We have Anna Devane approaching brother Cyrus this next week. She wants to put somebody in the cell with that gun dealing bad guy O'Neill to see if they can get some info. And so she asked for Cyrus's help. He still got ties on the inside because he told Laura he'd protect Nicholas. And I just wonder if Nick might be someone who is considered for this cellmate task. But another spoiler for the coming week says Jagger shuts down their plan. But that doesn't mean they won't go behind his back and still try to pull it off. So in General Hospital comings and goings news about the kids with Jason Morgan's return just two weeks away, Monday, March 4th. I expect to see more of Danny Morgan and also Jake Weber because their mutual mob enforcer daddy is back in just 10 episodes. What I really do not like, though, is this sloppy crap from the now fired writers that are having Sam basically spout what all longtime viewers know are total untruths. Sam keeps going on and on about Danny being this wild child adrenaline junkie because of Jason's DNA. Uh, Hello there, Miss Thing. Jason was a good kid growing up, unlike Samantha, who's really a Cassidy. She was a con woman who seduced and married rich men for money, along with many other shady deeds she did. And it is her reckless DNA, if anyone's, that is manifesting in Danny. Jason's dark side and thrill-seeking ways only came after AJ basically put him through the windshield of a car. Before that, Jason was a well-behaved little rich boy. I mean, just because Sam's saying this inaccurate crap doesn't mean fans are going to, you know, forget their history. We watched it, right? So I definitely hope Corte and Mulcahy do better in the new head writing roles. Corte at least knows her history. However, she's been involved with GH for a long time. So this stuff has been going out under her watch, but it may not have been, she may have raised an issue and they may have said, eh, don't worry about it. The viewers won't remember. We remember everything, right guys? So speaking of Jason and his March 4th arrival, all we have right now is the date and nothing more than that. Remember last time he came back on his promised due date, we just saw him in that patient six face mask and muzzle in that overseas facility where Ava Jerome spotted him while she was getting burn treatment, if I recall. I wonder if he's going to be found somewhere strange like that. Some people are certain Jason's been brainwashed and is the one killing the mob bosses. I mean, his skill set definitely would cover it. There's only one problem. The reason the Cassidines and Peter August targeted his twin Drew Kane for kidnapping instead of Jason was because they couldn't brainwash Jason because of all the scar tissue in his cranium from all his brain trauma. But the GH writers might be retconning that too. I mean, if Jason was killing mob bosses, that'd be pretty interesting because that would also mean he's not just going to snuggle right back up with Sonny right away when he's back in Port Chuck. So we should have some good spoilers on this soon and I will share them ASAP with you when we do. That is everything I have for General Hospital comings and goings. Please click subscribe if you haven't already. Definitely drop your comments and come back soon because we are here talking GH seven days a week. And as always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.